Hello, welcome back to another recipe. Today we're making fish pie. Over here I've just got some red potatoes and I'm going to boil these. So all I'm doing now is I'm just cutting a little rim around the centre. This is so that when these boil through I can just pull the skin off in one move instead of spending a good five minutes just peeling them. So this just saves me a bit of time. I find it's a really great hint that I saw somewhere on the internet and it actually works which is kind of surprising i'm sorry about the background noise i've got the washer going and now i'm just going to put these in some boiling salted water until they're completely soft and then i'll mash them up so my potatoes are boiling and now i've just got some small plum tomatoes which i'm going to half and fry off later and these will be scattered on top of the fish this is an optional step, I just really like a little bit of tomato in my fish pie. Um, so yeah, just half of these. Now over here I've got some cod, you can use haddock, you can use whatever fish you prefer, some people even use salmon. I like this because it's mild and it flakes up quite nicely. Although the different lengths, the thickness is pretty similar so they should cook at a similar rate. I'm just going to make sure they're completely dry by patting them the paper towel or a tissue which will stick and then make sure you pat the other side dry too. I put my fish on cling film just so I don't have to clean, clean the board again because I'll still be using it a little later. Just a bit of a time saving step. And now we're going to add salt and pepper to both sides. A little bit of salt. I'm also going to add a little bit of this, Herbe de Provence, or however it's pronounced. So let's add a little bit of this. You can adjust the seasonings to how you like it, depending on how you like your fish. I like my fish pies to be, you know, I like these. And this is an optional step, but you can add a little bit of oregano. I'm only going to add a small amount. This is because I really like oregano with tomato. And we're going to season the other side as well. The fish is pretty heavily seasoned but this is because you're going to have to taste it through the layer of pasta sauce, um, potato, cheese if you're going to add that so I want to make sure it's really well flavoured and any of the seasoning that's on the cling film you can just pat it on like so and make sure there's no waste. Drag the fish around make sure both sides are patted in firmly Pat those seasonings in and this is ready to be fried up. I've just folded my fish up and moved it to one side and I'm going to chop a clove of garlic. I'm going to fry this in the butter with the fish. Just chop it really nice and fine. I feel garlic goes perfectly with this. My potatoes have finished boiling. The skins are practically coming off themselves. You can see how much easier it is when you do that slit around the outside method. I'm just going to let it cool slightly before I pull them off and then this is ready to mash. Now we're going to fry the fish. Um, sorry for the beat up sort of looking pan, look at we're just still getting our kitchen finished. So we're going to hope to get some new equipment soon. But we're going to start with this on a medium heat, add some unsalted butter to the pan and just let it melt in. Along with the butter I'm going to add the sliced garlic. That will really infuse with the butter and just help to flavour it and in turn flavour the fish. So when your pan has heated up slightly we're going to gently add the fish. Be careful it doesn't break apart. It might break apart in the pan anyway but it won't be the biggest issue. Just gently adding them in until they heat up slightly. And then we're going to add the other piece gently. We're going to let it fry just a little on either side, maybe a minute or two. We're only frying the fish slightly. This is just to give it a bit of a head start before it goes into the oven. Now carefully flip it over and give it another minute just to finish searing on this side. And then this is ready to be transferred to your pot that you'll be baking it in. Try not to move your fish too much just, or flip it constantly. This might just make it break up and not be too nice. This is done and now I'm going to transfer it to my dish. Now to the same pan that the fish fried in, I'm going to fry the tomatoes slightly. 
just to get rid of any ex uh, excess moisture which could make your fish pie runny which is really not what you want plus the flavour flavor from the fish just helps to give a little flavour to the tomatoes as well so these are going to go in I'm going to add just a tiny bit of oregano to the tomatoes as I said before I think oregano and tomatoes go perfectly Oops. so a bit of extra seasoning mix it around these don't have to be cooked right through it's just enough to give them a little bit of flavour the garlic has really started to turn golden you can add this to the fish pie as well if you want I'm not going to I just want it there for the flavour so the tomatoes have finished frying up slightly they've softened a bit the skin has wrinkled and I'm going to add it to the fish so I've laid my fish into a bowl. I broke it up slightly just to fill the edges. I'm actually not overly keen on fish, which is why I tend to, if I eat it, I eat it in small quantities. And I try to disguise it by other things a little. I just like it in small quantities. So I'm going to add the tomatoes on here. I'm just being careful not to add the garlic. The potatoes have cooled slightly, so we're going to try peeling the outside off comes off a little easier usually when I do it like this. Ooh, still a bit hot to the touch, but yep, just peel that skin off. So I'm going to mash the potato up a little before I add milk and seasonings. I find that when I mash it whilst it's still hot, it just goes a lot easier for me and there's fewer lumps. So I'm putting the potato back on heat. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to it. You can add as much as you like. Everyone likes their mash their own way. I don't want this to be too rich because I want the fish to kind of stand out. It is a fish pie, even though I'm not overly keen on fish. I'm going to add a little splash of milk and see how we go from there. I almost forgot to add some salt and pepper. Just a little bit. Let's add some salt. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep mashing it whilst it's in here, being careful because it is on the heat, just to help get all those little lumps out. You, apparently a hand blender works quite well for this, I just can't be asked cracking that out. I actually saw that tick on Breaking Bad. And we have some creamy mashed potatoes. Make sure to taste it for seasoning, make sure it's right. If you want to add a bit more butter, add more. Same goes for salt and pepper, but I'm going to put this aside for later. Finally, we're going to make some parsley sauce. So we're going to start that with a little roux by making a roux and we're going to add a little butter, put that on a medium heat until that's melted. So the butter has melted and now I'm going to add a flour. I tend to use the ratio half the flour to the amount of butter. So let's just see how this goes. Mix it in and let it cook until this flour butter mixture loosens up and starts to turn a nutty brown. If you want a lighter sauce, cook it less. I just like to really cook that flour out of the butter though. I might add a tad more. Keep stirring to make sure it doesn't burn. So my flour has started to change towards a sort of nutty brown. It's still cooking as it goes. And now I'm going to add in milk. Slowly, just a little at a time. Give it a good whisk, keep it mixing. And then add a little bit more so that thickens. Just a little at a time. Keep it mixing and then you add a little more. And hopefully this will help stop any lumps. If you want, you can also add the milk quickly all at once. Cold milk in a hot pan, no lumps. But I don't have a proper egg, egg whisk, so it's really hard for me to get the lumps out that way. So at the moment, I'm just doing this method, long and slow. So I'm going to add some parsley to the parsley sauce. And let that cook in until it thickens. Remember, in the oven, it might thicken a bit more. Well, actually, with the fish releasing a bit of moisture, it might actually loosen up a bit. So maybe cook it a little thicker than you intend to. So I'm adding plenty of parsley. I really want to taste it through the mash and mix that in. 
A pinch of nutmeg is also really good in any sauce that you do, like a roux based sauce. However, I don't really have any on hand, so I'm just going to have to go with that. And when it starts to thicken, add your salt and pepper and then taste it, make sure the seasoning is right. So my sauce has had started thickening. I'm also going to add a small amount of sweet corn and peas. This is an optional step again, but I really do like it in my fish pies. I add the sweet corn and the peas a tad early before it's finished cooking, just to give the cha a chance for these to cook through. And when I add them, it waters down the sauce again. So yeah, just let it thicken with that in there. It's almost ready, so I'm going to start adding my salt and pepper. Small amount, and then taste it for seasoning. Oops. <laughs> so I had a heart attack moment there, thinking I'd added too much pepper when it fell in, but no, that's perfect. Let's keep mixing it. This is almost ready. And when it's thick enough for your liking, I like mine to be quite thick. Um, then you take it off the heat. Remember, it will thicken the more it co uh, cools, but when it's back in the oven. When it mixes with the juice from the fish, it might run out again. I just realised I have some ground nutmeg. I'm just going to add a tiny pinch. It's not really the same as the fresh stuff, but it'll just have to do. And mix that in. I've turned off the heat now because it's starting to thicken pretty quickly. And as I said, it'll thicken more with just the residual heat and as it cools. But again, it's to your liking. I let this thicken slightly more. I realised the fish was letting off a little more moisture than I realised. And I'm just doing it until it separates and comes back together again. So that's nice and thick. So I've got the fish here. As you can see, there's a lot of moisture still coming off there. That'll be the butter and the fish. I'm not going to get rid of it because that's all flavour. And uh, the sauce has really started to thicken even more as it cools. And I'm going to layer this on top. I know for a fact when this fish cooks more, it's definitely going to thin out this sauce. So maybe cook it slightly more, let it thicken a little more than you would actually like. And just layer that on. It doesn't have to be perfect, because it is going to spread as it cooks. But just make sure it's on there. Now we're going to add the mashed potato. You can scoop it on how you want, just try not to do it too thick. Just make sure it's even. Just layer it on. You can add as much as you like. I like quite a lot of mash on here. So you don't have to use it all if you don't want to. So I've added the mash and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try evening it out with a fork, sort of rough that mash up. I don't want it to be perfect because I really like, you know, it's all roughed up and a little jaggy. It gets really nice and crispy in the oven. And so do this as best you can. As I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure it's nicely roughed up. If you want, go in the opposite direction as well. And again, another optional step, you can add a tiny sprinkling of cheese on top of this, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of cheddar cheese, just a small amount. Don't want to cover that lovely design we've just made. I do wish I'd got mature cheddar. I think that would have been a bit better. But oh well, I feel like the cheddar's going to brown really nicely in the oven. Just layer that out. And now, a final sprinkling of parsley, just for a little pop of colour on the top. I just think it looks really nice there. And this is ready to be baked. We're going to bake this until the sides start bubbling, the top is nice and golden and crusted. And I think this is going to be delicious. So the fish pie is ready. I turned the heat to 200 degrees Celsius in the end, just to help it get really browned and golden. You can hear... It's nice and crispy. But let's cut a piece and see what it looks like inside. If you enjoy the recipe, please do leave a like, subscribe, click that notification bell. Let's cut around this edge. I'm really looking forward to digging into this. 
Oh, yeah, that looks delicious. You can see the fish inside, the peas, the sweet corn, some of the tomato and the fish there. So, yep, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the recipe. Thank you for watching.